What's up guys, welcome to another rankings video. In this one we have the ACC coaching rankings, the last Power Four conference. I've done SEC, I've done Big 12, Big 10, so go check out all of those. I have this one to do, then I have the G5 conferences to do, so that should be interesting. But yeah, let's get to the ACC rankings. And if this is your first time seeing Three and Out, remember go watch my other videos. Uh, go on TikTok, we're on TikTok, Three and Out CFB. We're on Twitter at 3 and out underscore CFB. So go follow us on there. Trying to post daily and grow those channels, especially with college football season right around the corner. At number 17, Fran Brown at Syracuse. Just like the other videos, I put all the new FBS head coaches that have never done it before last. So it's kind of like I'm not ranking them based on expectations or anything. They just haven't done it yet. So Fran Brown is at 17, new head coach at Syracuse, an elite recruiter at Georgia. Already proving that with uh, Kyle McCord from Ohio State, the quarterback. Justin Ross Simmons, the wide receiver from Colorado State. Should be great additions for Syracuse. And he was born pretty close to Syracuse, like 300 miles from from the college and uh so it's almost like going back home in a way i have a lot of faith in Fran brown at number 16 troy taylor at stanford only been a head coach at the fbs level for one year and that was last year three and nine just a really rough year all around but it's stanford you knew the rebuild was going to take a while he's not proven in the fbs at all but his sacramento state days at the fcs level speak for themselves so uh, he needs to prove something in year two. They get Elite A.O. Manor back at wide receiver, the guy who just had an amazing game against Colorado uh, back last year. So got some hope there. Number 15, Tony Elliott at Virginia. Just like Troy Taylor at Stanford, we know these programs are going to take a while to rebuild and probably even longer at Virginia for uh, Tony Elliott. But it's year three. He has two three-win seasons in a row, and he needs to show something this year, or he could be gone. Now, for the actual team, they have Anthony Calandria back at quarterback, the young freshman last year who proved how tough he was. And also in the portal, they picked up a lot of wide receivers to help him out. Number 14, Justin Wilcox at California. He's ahead of these guys just because he's been doing it longer. He has three bowl appearances in his seven years at Cal, and his best season was five years ago with eight wins. So he has to show something in 2024, and they have the talent to do it. Fernando Mendoza is back at quarterback for another season. Jaden Ott, the elite running back, one of the best backs in the country, is back for another season. So they have the talent for Wilcox to prove himself. Number 13, Brent Key at Georgia Tech. Key is coming off his first full season as a head coach for Georgia Tech. And seven and six in your first full season is pretty dang good, especially at Georgia Tech. He is young, has the potential to move up on this list very, very quickly. And they have the talent to do so. Quarterback Haynes King, very underrated quarterback, former A&M quarterback, comes back for another season. And also Jamal Haynes, the running back comes back after another really good season in 2023. Number 12, Brent Pry at Virginia Tech. Just like Brent Key, I get these guys confused sometimes. I really do, how similar their names are. And they're in the same conference and they're both in year three now at uh, their respective programs. Both had really drastic uh, improvements in year two. So really funny, man. And uh, Brent Pry went seven and six with the Hokies in 2023 after a rough, rough start and losses to weird teams at the beginning of the season, like Marshall, uh, Purdue, Rutgers, just weird losses. Won five out of the last seven games, won their bowl game. And in 2024, they have so much momentum, especially behind star quarterback, Kyron Drones. Number 11, Bill O'Brien, new Boston College head coach. I have him here because of what he did at Penn State over a decade ago. And he won Big Ten Coach of the Year his first season at Penn State. Had another good year in year two before going to the NFL for the Texans job. He comes back to Boston College. It's kind of like coming back home for him. It really is. And that's why I like him so much there. I think he can be there for a while and build a really good program at Boston College. Number 10, another new face in the ACC, Manny Diaz at Duke. Manny Diaz finally gets a fair shot because he did not get a fair shot at Miami. Had three pretty good seasons there, and they picked up Mario Cristobal as the first chance they got. They picked up Mario Cristobal, let him go. He goes to Penn State, becomes a defensive coordinator there, and makes that defense into a national champion type of defense, but he could not help what the offense did. And he has a ton of hype going into 2024. They have Malik Murphy at quarterback. And I really like Manny Diaz at the head coach position. Number nine, Mario Cristobal at Miami. Speaking of Cristobal, he ends up ninth on this list. A long coaching career. 
Started off at Florida International, two really good seasons there. Gets the Oregon job later on, had two really good seasons there. And, but they just were never as elite as they probably should have been, especially with the talent that Oregon always has. Now in year three at Miami, they have playoff expectations. They have sky high expectations, and I think they should. I really do. I'm a firm believer in Miami this year and the roster that they have created. Through the transfer portal, they have dominated it, dominated it. Cam Ward, a quarterback from Washington State, stud. Damian Martinez, running back from Oregon State, stud. And they kept two elite wide receivers in Xavier Restrepo and Jacoby George. Just sky-high expectations in Cora Gables. Number eight, Pat Narduzzi at Pittsburgh. What a rough, rough year for Pat Narduzzi and the Pittsburgh Panthers. Coming off two amazing seasons, and they follow it up with a three and nine season and a lot of drama off the field uh, with some post-game conferences. It's just, just weird stuff. A ACC championship in 2021 keeps him even this high on this list and expectations don't look too good for 2024. So he could drop even further next year when I do this. Number seven, Rhett Lashley at SMU, a new ACC head coach, a new ACC team at SMU. They come over from the AAC conference where they won the conference, went nine and zero in conference, went 11 and three total. And uh, they have, they will not be pushovers in the ACC whatsoever. They have star quarterback Preston Stone returning, 28 touchdowns, I think only six interceptions last year. So week in and week out, they will be competitive in every game. Number six, Mac Brown at North Carolina, one of the only three active head coaches to win a national championship, and two of those are in the ACC. Mac Brown is going into his 34th season as a head coach, uh, started off at Tulane, went to North Carolina, went to Texas, won a national championship in 2005 with Vince Young, and then took a break from coaching, got back in it in 2019 with North Carolina, and has been solid. I would say he's been solid with North Carolina. Not elite, especially with the talent at quarterback they've had with Drake May, Sam Howell. Just should have been better. Really should have been better. And this year, they do not have an elite quarterback whatsoever. Max Johnson, pretty good quarterback, is the starter as of right now. But also, Connor Harrell could be looked at as the future of North Carolina. So he could get a lot of playing time this year. But it does help that they have a top three running back coming back in Amari on Hampton. Number five, Dave Clawson at Wake Forest, a very underrated coach. He's been doing this for quite a while. It's his 11th season at Wake Forest going into 2024. And last year was rough, four and eight after two amazing seasons in a row. And they lost Sam Hartman last year, so that took a toll on them. And this year, they just don't really have a lot of elite talent whatsoever. So I know Clawson's a really good coach. I don't have two High expectations for Wake Forest this year. We'll see what he can do. Number four, Jeff Brom at Louisville. First year at his alma mater, and he takes them to the ACC championship game. 10-4 and four, and a really good season for the Cardinals. His first head coaching stop was at Western Kentucky, where he was brilliant there. Got the Purdue job, had several winning seasons. And in 2024, man, they went all in in the portal. They got Tyler Shuck at quarterback after Jack Plummer left thankfully for Louisville fans especially. Tyler Shuck comes in from Texas Tech. Uh, they got a star wide receiver, Colin Lacey from South Alabama. They have Tamarian McDonald at safety from Tennessee. Then they also have another really good wide receiver, Ja'Cory Brooks from Alabama. So a lot of high expectations in Louisville. Number three, Dave Dorn at NC State, the most underrated coach in the ACC and quite possibly even the country. He gets another eight plus win season there for the fourth year in a row. Only two losing seasons out of his 11 at NC State. Their best player, wide receiver Kevin Concepcion, comes back and just a stud last year. And at quarterback, they get Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina. Had a rough 2023, but before that, I mean, he was a star quarterback. 88 touchdowns and 14 interceptions in his time at Coastal Carolina. Speaks for itself. Number two, and this could surprise some people, I have Dabo Sweeney at Clemson. What a story for Dabo. The former wide receivers coach is going into his 17th season as the head coach there. Two national championships, two more national championship appearances. Clemson just totally dominated the sport. Um, just right behind Alabama for a span of about five to six years. And they have been dominating the ACC for as long as Dabo's been there, year in and year out in the ACC. Now, 2023 was not always pretty for Clemson. Started off four and four. Dabo got into it with Tyler from Spartanburg on that radio call. 
and they ended up winning the last five games with two uh, really good wins, especially against Notre Dame when Notre Dame came to Clemson. But the biggest knock on Dabo is that he won't use the dang transfer portal. He will not use it whatsoever. He does not believe in it. That apparently goes against his NIL, uh, what he calls Jesus' name, image, and likeness that Clemson's been using for since he's got there. <laughs> Just really wild stuff. Clemson's the only non-service academy football team to not have any transfers. Not have any. They've had plenty of guys transfer out. Their best wide receiver, probably uh, Bo Collins, transferred to Notre Dame. So they know what the transfer portal is. They just don't utilize it, which makes no sense. But Clemson is going to be Clemson. They're going to be contenders in the ACC year in and year out, even with other really good teams in the conference. They will find a way to claw in and be right behind them. I mean, they almost beat Florida State last year. That game came down to the wire, and they had plenty of chances to do it, but they just did not get it done. This year, they have Cade Klubnit back at quarterback. He's pretty inconsistent, but last year he was good for a majority of the time. He'll get another full season if he stays healthy. They did lose Will Shipley, but man, they have Phil Malfa back there at running back, and he is becoming a star. And then on the defensive side, they have one of the best linebackers in the country, Barrett Carter. But at number one, Mike Norvell at Florida State. Norvell is going into his fifth year at Florida State. Two mediocre seasons starting out and then two 10-win seasons there. And then last year, an undefeated season that should have came along with a playoff appearance. But that's a totally different story. I know Florida State fans want to forget about it or they just want to hold on to it forever and hate the college football world for it, which I understand. And But the moral of the story is that Norvell has won everywhere he's been and he's always been a master of the transfer portal. Legend quarterback Jordan Travis leaves. They pick up DJU in the portal. Uh, running back Roy Dale Williams from Alabama. Defensive lineman Marvin Jones, a former five-star, comes over. Then also they have one of the best defensive linemen in the country, Patrick Payton, coming back for another year. So huge expectations for Florida State, as they should. And uh, they are the odds-on favorite to win the ACC again. I totally understand if you have Dabo over Mike Norvell at this point, but for me, at this point in their careers, I'm taking Mike Norvell as the best coach in the ACC. So yeah, guys, that is my ACC coaching rankings. Comment what you disagree with below. I'm sure there is a lot to disagree with on this one. Um, like and subscribe on this channel. Also on TikTok, follow us at 3 and Out CFB and on Twitter at 3 and Out underscore CFB. Trying to grow both of those channels. We are posting daily content and trying to post more, especially with college football right around the corner. But I appreciate y'all for watching.